Good morning, I'm Wayworn Worm, and welcome to my channel, and welcome back to the Monster Manual Backward. Today we are going to cover the camel, the donkey, and the mule. Starting with the camel, it is a large beast that is unaligned, and it has an armor class of 9, which... That's, I think that's one of the lowest in the game, actually. Uh, 15 hit points, which is 2d10 plus 4, and a speed of 50 feet. Has a strength of 16, a dexterity of 8. Uh, that's where we get the 9 armor class. Uh, constitution of 14, intelligence of 2, wisdom of 8, and a charisma of 5. Has a passive perception of 9 doesn't speak any languages, and is challenge rating one-eighth. And its action is bite. It's a melee weapon attack, plus five to hit, reach of five feet, one target, and on a hit it does 1d4 bludgeoning damage. Oh yeah, I guess it would, it makes sense that it's bludgeoning because they don't have sharp teeth. If I was using a camel... <clears throat> Excuse me, got something stuck in my throat real quick. Uh, if I was going to use a camel, I would do it in one of two ways. Either it would be in a random encounter table, um, maybe in a desert area where you're going to find most of the camels. Um, you could put it in an analog of the American Southwest where there are plants that uh, none of the local animals can eat. However, camels from North Africa are perfectly fine eating those plants. Um, or I would put it as a mount for a um, probably a desert-dwelling culture. Uh, that was roughly human-sized. Because that is something that historically happened. There are cavalry that in the ancient world that used camels. They're uh, generally referred to as desert cavalry. Um, then there are the Bedouin, who do that to this day. Although, obviously, their preference is horses. They do use camels. Um, yeah, that is the majority of the camel. Uh, it's not... Again, with, with these low challenge rating, they're not more than background for the most part. Um, I don't really foresee a group of adventurers ever getting into a fight with a camel. But in case they do, you have... You have the stats for them. Although I suppose camels wouldn't make bad... Uh, since they do have 50 feet, um, they wouldn't make bad choices for, like, polymorph or um, wild shape to get you through um, desert-like areas. So, uh, let's move on. Well, this is rather embarrassing both during the recording of this video up to this point and in the Stolen Land video, which went live yesterday, I referred to this video being a camel, a donkey, and a mule. It is not a donkey. It is actually a pony. So we're going to go ahead with the pony, and let's get into it. So pony is a medium beast that is unaligned, has an armor class of 10, hit points of 2d8 plus 2, which averages out to 11, a speed of 40 feet, a strength of 15, a dexterity of 10, a constitution of 13, an intelligence of 2, a wisdom of 11, a charisma of 7, with the senses of passive perception 10, no languages, challenge rating 1 8, and hooves is its only action. That is a melee weapon attack, plus four to hit, reach of five feet, one target, and on a hit it does 2d4 plus two 
bludgeoning damage. So, stat-wise, a pony and a camel are not very different. Um... The pony is 5% harder to hit. However, it has four fewer hit points. Um, it is less likely to hit with only a plus four versus the camel's plus five. However, it is going to do slightly over twice the damage when it does hit. So other than that, stat-wise, they are essentially identical a camel's 10 feet faster um yeah so again this would go on maybe a random encounter table and also to use as a mount for your halflings for your gnomes um they can use ponies Maybe even dwarves, if we're going the whole token, uh, Tolkien-esque route. Um, other than that, again, they're just going to kind of be set dressing. I don't imagine a party will ever get into a fight with a, don with a pony. Um, but if they do, you have the stats for it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's about all on the pony. Let us move on to the mule. And we are ending today with a mule. And looking at the stat block, I can understand why mule and donkey are not separate. Uh, if I was going to run a donkey, I'd use the same stat block. But let's get into what the stat block actually says. So a mule is a medium beast unaligned, armor class of 10, hit points of 11, which is 2d8 plus 2, a speed of 40 feet, strength of 14, dexterity of 10, constitution of 13, intelligence of 2, wisdom of 10, charisma of 5. It has a passive perception of 10 for its senses, no languages, challenge rating 1 8th, beast of burden. The mule is considered to be a large animal for the purpose of determining its carrying capacity and sure-footed. The mule has advantage on strength and dexterity saving throws made against effects that would knock it prone. I love how specific that ability is. And its only action is hooves, melee weapon attack, plus two to hit, reach of five feet, one target, and on a hit it does 1d4 plus two bludgeoning damage. So a mule is like a pony, only worse. However, it does have Beast of Burden and Sure-Footed, which is why I would use the Mule stat for a donkey. Um, yeah, so... You know, I would use this as set dressing for... Uh, like, mines... Um, or like uh, in Santorini, uh, in the Mediterranean, one of the ways to get from the port up to the city itself is by having donkeys and mules carry you up. Um, basically, this would be where, where beasts of burden are needed, but it's not conducive to ox or horses. So, more mountainous terrains, that sort of thing. Um, interesting, their intelligence is only two. I would have actually probably put it up at three, because um, donkeys and mules are very well known to be intelligent. Um, like, they're used very frequently in the modern day in Afghanistan, and... Um, the donkeys know the routes that they frequently take and to, to the point where you can send donkeys by themselves and they will successfully traverse the entire, um, path, the entire route. And not only that, but 
because they know where they're going and they know the path so well, they can actually avoid problems that come up too quickly for people to be able to react to to save the donkeys. Um, donkeys also know when their packs are not properly um, situated and they'll just refuse to go. So, but that's just a little thing. Um, yeah, I would use mules as as just work animals, uh, set dressing, essentially. Again, I don't foresee a party getting into a fight with a mule. Um, you could. It wouldn't be that hard of a fight. Or maybe there are um, herds of mules and donkeys that are terrorizing the local populace, and so they've got to go cull the herd or something. I don't know. Um, but, you know, as we're seeing going through the Appendix A, a lot of these creatures are going to be set dressing. They're almost all very low challenge ratings. Um, but yeah, they're, they're kind of the more mundane creatures. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Monster Manual Backward. Um, right now, I would tell you to make sure that you go over to my Twitch tomorrow night for Curse of Strahd. However, I'm actually recording this before what looks like is going to be our last episode. And if that is indeed the case, um, Curse of Strahd might be over by the time this video goes live. And if it's not, well then, make sure you watch it at 6.30 p.m. Pacific. Uh, link into the description as always. If it is over, uh, we're either starting character creation on a new game tomorrow night, or we may be taking a week off. If you look at my Twitter, which is at WaywarnWorm and is also down in the description below, I will be sure to let you know. Thank you.